Mexico stands today in a very favorable position with respect to medical innovation. First of all, this is a huge market. Many, many people and good literacy skills and good professional skills and also a proximity to the US, which is the largest uh, biopharmaceutical market. Mexico, since the NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement, since NAFTA, Mexico has a fairly or relatively well, uh, relatively robust IP regime which is critical for medical innovation and, uh, and, attracting, and attracting investments. Mexico also has some room for improvement in that aspect. Why is that? Because while some conditions, critical conditions for the competitiveness in the biomedical field are met in Mexico, still the rate of clinical research here is very low. Uh, a research that we have done with ANIF uh, about a year back, which is called Incentivizing Innovation and is focused mainly on the IP, uh, on the IP protection, the IP regime, and the entire clinical research policy environment, showing that if Mexico was to improve, even slightly, even halfway through what is needed to reach the international level, the international standard. Mexico could see very, very quickly the investments come pouring in in huge amounts of money. We're talking about, uh, to our estimates, anywhere up to, going on the optimistic scenario, up to more than $780 million a year and more than 220 clinical trials a year. It's not only about the money. Clinical trials is first and foremost about the patients because tragically for a lot of pati patients, clinical trials are often, unfortunately, can be the last resort to get the medication for a condition which may be uh, unmet, in an unmet need. And the societal value of clinical research is even bigger. It, is, it provides physicians with experience, participation in what is known as a multi-centered trial where conducted in several uh, regions, several areas, countries, and experience involved in working with a, in a clinical research which is uh, conducted in a highly um, a controlled environment. It also provides tax contributions and money to, uh, to support better infrastructure for the hospitals. If you want an example from where I am based, Israel, in 2013, clinical trials alone, only clinical trials, have contributed more than, it's about, about 120, 130 million dollars only in 2013 to hospitals via clinical research. Israel is now an emerging clinical research hub. But, the US, but the, uh, Mexico has its proximity to the United States, which other uh, emerging clinical research hubs such as uh, Singapore and South Korea does not have. And they do not have this proximity. They do not have the... Um, resources that Mexico has. So if these improvements were to be made, more clinical trials and more money can be seen. That is going directly to hospitals, to clinical research organizations, to stakeholders, and to the patients themselves. IP is a critical issue. It's a critical issue for the pharmaceutical companies because this is the um, this is the key driver for pharmaceutical innovation. You see, the pharmaceutical innovation process costs billions of dollars, billions. A lot, a lot of money is being poured on, uh, invested in the research and development of new drugs. And the pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceutical companies, the pharmaceutical sector, is, I think, the sector that um, invests the highest share of the sales into R&D activities. IP is a critical driver for the growth of pharmaceutical innovation, for its continuation. But other issues, of course, are important and cannot be, um, cannot be overlooked. For example, the regulatory harmonization uh, with international standards, issues of pharmacovigilance, pharmacovigilance is, okay, issues of pharmacovigilance, and, of course, uh, the legal certainty 
This is what basically what creates the attractive environment. And once the environment becomes more attractive, more investments will turn up.